Vlogging a whole trip with just one action camera? Surely not. So DJI's Osmo Action has been out for well over a year now. Released in May 2019, it's seen a good number of updates since then, addressing a number of things from a lagging screen in certain shooting modes to adding live streaming functionality. We got our hands on one back in August ahead of a trip my wife and I were planning. You see, in recent years, we've taken to vlogging our trips just for fun and because, well, we, we love to create. We run a media production company here in Liverpool and well, yeah, it's our passion. So we vlog our trips too. It's a bit of a busman's holiday Day, but we love it. In fact, we vlogged our whole 16 day trip to Thailand back in January 2019. Back then, we were using the Canon G7X Mark I, a powerhouse of a compact camera that we reviewed in the past here on the channel, and one that did as great back then. But it was missing a few things. It didn't shoot in 4K, and although the autofocus on it was great, it wasn't very stabilized, even when we really tried to keep it steady while walking with it on this gorilla pod. Fast forward to this year, and the reason we went for the Osmo Action was we had another trip planned. And I thought the first ever all out action camera from DJI would be great, especially with the rock steady stabilization. To be fair, at the beginning of this year, we were planning on a return to Thailand for a whole month this time at around April or May. We knew which areas we wanted to return to and where we wanted to venture to next. However, COVID hit and plans needed to be changed. So my wife, Emma, who plans all our trips because well, she's amazing at that kind of thing, came up with an idea. Since January this year, 2020, we'd started going out for walks. We both got Fitbits for the Christmas just gone, and we soon realized what a daily suggested step count of 10,000 actually equated to. Approximately three and a half to four miles if you're interested. And we haven't half got our steps in this year, especially during the first lockdown. So this year, instead of the beautiful Thai islands and the hustle and bustle of the most retrofitted city I have ever seen, Bangkok, we were going on a walking holiday here in the UK. Scotland to be precise and the West Highland Way, a 96 mile multi-day hike from Mulgai just outside Glasgow to Fort William, all the way along the great Loch Lomond and through the Highlands of Scotland. I knew the Osmo would be great and it was. As part of our media production company, our main camera is the A7 III uh, and we chuck it on the Weeble S for stabilization and yeah, I wouldn't have been happy on here. Of course, it's not weather sealed, so I wouldn't have got it out anywhere near as much. And there was a guy yesterday that we passed that had the A6400 around his neck. I tell you what, I'm so glad I went with this over that. And it's given me everything I need, really. Yeah, first and foremost, the lack of sealing on the A7 III really would have been an issue. Anything happens to our working gear while we're on the trail, and there's your downtime once we're back while we're waiting for insurance replacements and all that kind of thing. Not something we were willing to accept for vlogging on our tiny little travel channel. Just to be clear, we had fully ruled out the G7X Mark I for filming this trip, as even around pavements in Thailand, the footage was plenty shaky. Imagine how bad it would have been over that rocky terrain. Furthermore, we were heading to Scotland, a place where within half an hour you can go from baking sunshine to driving rain. Above all else we needed waterproofness. So how about the built-in mic on the Osmo? As you can tell the audio is good. I've got no external audio on top of here purely because I need it to be fully waterproof. We did have the USB Type-C adapter that you could use to plug in an external mic but you need to remove the side door on the Osmo Action to be able to use that and taking that away also takes away the weather seal. Not a good idea when, well, the weather's so changeable that it's just, you know, it's wet and then it's not, and then it is. Uh, but yeah, it's just, I'm on 4K 60, which I can double check in there, in the actual screen. I can check how much I've got left on the SD card. I've got the battery on there. It tells me everything I need to know. Quickly at a quick glance, I'm on a Joby and I'm not even at arm's length. In fact, my elbow right now is into my rib. That was a great realization too. Hold on. D-Warp was turned off as I was more than happy to do a little bit of tweaking in post to get rid of any fisheye effect. But yeah, when I got into the edit, I didn't think I really needed to, even with holding the camera like that rather than holding it at arm's length. There's a link in the description, by the way, if you fancy seeing all of our stuff. Why not subscribe to our travel channel while you're there? Yeah, God knows we could do with more subs. Some crazies do the 96 mile hike over four or five days. 
madness. We plan to do it over seven days, which meant every day we will be covering between 12 to 19 miles with one nine mile day in the middle. So away we went, armed with the Osmo action and the impending feeling that we'd bitten off more than we could chew. Well, I could chew to be fair. Emma's an ex-professional dancer, i.e. former athlete. There's no doubt she'd be able to cope, but me? The final convincer for the Osmo action was of course the main selling point when it was first released, the front facing screen. The front facing screen is just, it's, it's, it's brilliant, it really is. It seems a little bit dark, but that might also be because I'm under quite a lot of like bright cloud cover. An action camera with the ability to monitor yourself while you're filming yourself, it's brilliant. As you can see, the quality of the footage is nothing to be sniffed at either. It's not the greatest in low light, but that's to be expected with the sensor size. I mean, it, it will be tiny in there and more than acceptable for the kind of thing that we were shooting. And that added waterproofness lets you get shots like this. Now that's something I had in mind before we went out. It's a little trick. Everything on the trip was shot at 4K at 60 FPS. I edit in 1080, 25 FPS. This allowed me to slow down any clips to like 50% without any loss in quality. In fact, that scene as the camera comes out of the water was actually slowed down to 40% and it still holds up. All in all, the DJI Osmo Action enabled us to vlog with very little setup and very little worry compared to looking around the big guns with us all day and much steadier than using the G7X. Granted, it's not super smooth all the time. It's that Y axis that you've got to watch, but yeah, it proved really well. What I didn't love is the strobing effect when indoors sometimes. I'm pretty sure that it's something to do with alternative current AC in the lights and the flicker rate, but I tried in settings to set both to 50 Hertz or 60 Hertz and played around with the FPS and still no change. I don't know, maybe it's a firmware update or just a limitation of the processor inside, but I'm shooting here with the VL150 from Godox. And I mean, I'm there, there's no flicker. I mean, look, the, I've got this right in shot and there's no flicker. So I'm, I'm really not too sure. What I do know is that if there is a flicker or a strobing in your video, you can see, sorry, I just realized I'm looking at the, <laughs> honestly, it's so good having the screen to the side. And the thing is, because it's only ever so slightly off axis, I mean, can you tell that I'm looking away from the camera? Probably, but because it's just literally there, it's actually in your peripheral. So if I even come in here and looking, I mean, no one really wants to be that close, not even my wife, but, I can see in my peripheral that I'm in shot at least. Yeah, yeah, center, so hmm. The strobing certainly isn't a game changer for me. It wouldn't stop me purchasing it all over again. In addition to the video mode, there's of course still shooting, which we didn't use at all. But what we did use is the motion lapse setting, a time lapse, but with motion. The camera bears in mind as it takes the images for your time lapse that the camera will be moving and it does its best to smooth out any bumps between frames. And personally, I'd say it does a damn good job. So vlogging with an action camera, if you've got the DJI Osmo Action, it's more than doable. What's more, there's very little worry that a drop or a knock will end your vlogging shoot. Seriously, with the Osmo Action and the Mavic Air Mark I with us, we were pretty much set. Does that make me a DJI fanboy? I'm fine with that. In addition to those two, we brought an OTG hub and an external hard drive, and we were able to back up with that both the Osmo and the Mavic using a phone as a pass-through, negating any need for bringing a laptop along or one of those pricey one-touch storage backups. It was brilliant, worked like a charm. Check out the links below if you'd like to see the whole series of us doing the West Highland Way with this little beast. I'd love to know your thoughts though. Do you have a camera in mind that could do better with still maintaining that small footprint and waterproofing and stabilization? I'd love to know. With that said, as always, my name's Adam. This is Music of a Man. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one.